To honor their gods, the ancient Greeks created wonders that forced them to make extraordinary technological discoveries. One such breakthrough was a theater built to honor the god Dionysius. It was the greatest theater in the Western world with the most advanced acoustic design. Hidden in the hills of Epidaurus, about a hundred miles from Athens, the 14,000-seat theater has dazzled audiences for two and a half thousand years. It is a feat of engineering. 55 rows of stone seats built into the hillside with such precision that the theater has perfect acoustics. This theater at Epidaurus is quite simply the most special theatrical space in the Western world. It's the largest of all the surviving ancient theaters. It's the most beautiful. This is somewhere where the spirit of the god of drama, Dionysus, still lives on. Surprisingly, the reason for sighting the theater in this remote place has its origin in medicine. Next to the theater was a vast healing center, and to the ancient Greeks, theater was medicine. One way of trying to understand the link between the healing cult and this particularly exquisite theater is that for the ancient Greeks, music, and, and Greek theater is a fundamentally musical experience, was actually used in medical therapy. The great philosopher Aristotle actually writes about how people who are distressed and, 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 and psychologically disturbed can come to um, a great resolution of that and to a much happier state of mind by listening to certain kinds of music and watching certain kinds of performance. At the adjacent healing centre, the god of medicine, Asclepios, and his magical snakes were said to work miracles. Medical cures and remedies were inscribed on stone tablets. Shrines were built to the cult of Asclepios, and the center developed into a wealthy healing sanctuary. People came from across the empire to cure every ailment and disability. In 360 BC, the money collected from patients was used to build a vast theater. The architect, Polycletus, had already built a roundhouse at the sanctuary, but now set about a far grander circular design. He chose a bowl-shaped site facing west, so the rising sun would light up the landscape behind the stage. He dug out the round performance space before creating the huge seating area, known as the gazing space. Thousands of limestone blocks cut from local quarries formed the seats. His design was for 32 rows, although 23 more were added two centuries later. Behind the actors was the scanner, the origin of the word scene, a two-story stage building which was painted as a backdrop for the play. The scanner also enabled early special effects. When a play required a god to descend from the heavens, an actor was flown in on a hoist. The masked performers often played to audiences of up to 14,000 without the benefit of microphones. Polyclitus was able to create perfect acoustics. Even a coin being dropped at the center of the performance circle can be heard clearly in the back rows. The design of the theater also enhances the sound of the human voice. The secret lies in how sounds are reflected by the stone itself, reducing the amount of distorting echo. A sound is produced by somebody's mouth. It will hit a wall, that's a reflection. And what they've done in Apodavros in order to create a large quantity of short reflections is that they've broken up the surface. You know, there is no surface which is flat. So when a sound hits a wall, it's diffused in many, many directions. It enhances the original sound by kind of stretching it a little bit longer than it already is. And in the quest for perfection, the Greeks developed another technique to make the sound even clearer. When somebody speaks in a theater, you can hear resonances. And if you have an ear for it, you know which re resonances are going to get in the way of the, of the dialogue. So if you were to find something that can take those resonances out, then you're laughing. And that's exactly what they tried to do. They used a resonator, which they would tune to the frequencies that they wanted to take out and to the reflections they wanted to take out. And they would embed them in the wall. 
two and a half thousand years later, the theatre is still entrancing audiences. The place that has inspired for millennia remains one of the world's finest theatres. The ancient Greeks produced some of the most astonishing buildings in history.